So in our last lesson, we went ahead and set it up so that it would actually go out and pick a button for us. And then all we had to do was click the button after it. But it's only doing one button at a time now. So today I want to go ahead and set it up so that it'll keep adding more buttons as we're done the pattern. So for instance, it starts off, it picks one button for us. We click it. If we get it right, it goes ahead and adds another button to the sequence. Then we have to go through. And if we get both of them right, it goes ahead and adds another button to the sequence again. And then if we ever fail, it just starts over for us. So let's go ahead and jump into some code and start that up. So I'm actually going to come down to the player pick button. And there's going to be a little few changes here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the braces because I'm going to want more than one line of code in here. So if we fail, I'm going to call a reset method. It doesn't have to be public. And there's really two things I want to do in here. One, let's go ahead and set that color order array. Or sorry, it's not the array, it's the list. I want to go ahead and clear that whole thing out. So if we've got five buttons already picked and stored in there and we fail, it'll go ahead and clear that out. At some point, we should also go ahead and check to see uh, if we have a new uh, high score. So we'll add that in there. And the reason why I made it a separate method is because when we fail, we want to call it. But I have a tendency to like to call these things from start as well. Just so I know that when the game first starts up, I'm getting that, that nice, fresh reset game. There we go. So let's come down to the player's pick. Now we're going to have to keep track of what pick number he's on. So going back to our previous example, if he's got five colors already stored away, you know, and he's picking that first one, which we're doing the comparison here in our if block. But if he gets that right, we need a way to increase this number so that we're comparing to the second one in the block. And of course, the third, the fourth, the fifth, until we get to, to whatever the, the, the max number is. In this case, it's, we can find that out by color.order.count. Sorry, color.order.count. So we're just going to go ahead and create a variable for that. And I am going to make this public. It's just going to be an int. It doesn't need to be displayed in the inspector. We don't need the serialized field. But I'm going to put it there just so we can actually see it, so we can monitor and keep track of it. It's great for debugging purposes. Later on, you can go ahead and just get rid of the serialized field and keep it hidden. But I'm going to call this pick number. Now, I'm going to start it off at zero. And depending who you talk to, if you're in a place where there's a lot of C-sharp programmers, especially if C-sharp is the only language there, by default, ints default to zero anyway, so they just tell you not to do it. You know, you got to be a good C-sharp programmer. But if you're working in an area where you have multiple languages being used, a lot of the times they'll just want you to go ahead and set it to zero just so that you know it's done. It's only a few extra keystrokes. It's not that big of a deal. All right, but with that done, we can now come in here and put that in. And since we're defaulting it to zero, it should just work the exact same way as it did before. There we go. And of course, if we fail, over to the game manager. We notice the size went back down to zero. So the reset's being done. And just to make sure, I'll copy this in and just say resetting. So let's go back to player's pick. So we'll come into here and we'll say, if they pick the right one for the color they're supposed to pick, we're going to go ahead and take that pick number, increase it so we can check for the next one. And I'm actually going to leave the comment at the top. Now, the next thing I want to check is to see if that pick number is the same as the color order dot count. So if we've reached the end, let's go ahead and start that coroutine back over again. So we're going to go ahead and cycle through all the numbers we have and then add a new one to it. And what did we call it? We called it play game. Yeah. I guess I could have just copied this up here just to make sure I don't get any typos. <laughs> And there is another thing we should do here. I'm actually going to do it before we start. And that is update the player's score. We haven't worked on score yet. We'll probably do it tomorrow. But we'll put the comments in there just so we know where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead. We'll head up to the play game. And we're going to do a little bit of working here. So every time we do a round, this is called. So the first thing we should do is make sure that that pick number is set back to zero. So when it comes down here for them to pick, it's actually starting off at zero again for us. 
Now we still want to have that first initial yield where we wait whatever our defined value is. But before we go ahead and pick a random color, we need to play the colors that are stored already. So the previous ones. Now we've been going ahead and using for loops up until now. This time around, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at for each. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just type one out and then we'll go over exactly what it does. All right, so we've got our for each, which works just like a for loop. But what we're gonna do is say, take all of the ints, this data type here, in the colored order list, do something with it, and we're gonna to refer to them as colored index. So when we go through, again, we'll go ahead and use the example of having five colors in there. So we're gonna go through, go to the first one, and we're just gonna call it colored index. Before we'd have some sort of thing, you know, like colored order that in the square brackets, it's index. We don't need that anymore. Now all we have to do is go button. The index that we're on, is, that we had stored in the color button list, and then we can just call its press button. So again, just to quick reiterate, if we had five values in our list here, and let's say the first one, let's say they're all put in order for whatever reason. So it goes zero, one, two, three, then zero, one, two. So we'll go through and on the first one, it's like, oh, this, the number stored is zero. So let's go ahead and grab button zero and press its button. Then it's gonna go through and grab the next one and go, oh, let's go ahead and grab uh, button one and press, it zero, uh, and press its button and so on until it goes through them all. Now, after it presses the button, we wanna make sure that we're calling that yield again. We wanna make sure that we're waiting. Then after it's done pressing all the buttons, go ahead and pick a new random number to attach to the list. Let's go ahead, we'll jump into our game, see if we have any errors, it does not appear so. So let's hit play and see how it works. So it reset and then it went ahead and picked element two which is yellow. I've got to stop looking up there. <laughs> We've got them over here for a reason. All right, so element two is yellow. And also take a note here that the pick number we're on is zero. So I'm gonna click yellow. So I got it right. Now, oh, I wasn't paying attention again. We go back down to pick number is zero. Now it's uh, yellow and green. So yellow, the pick number goes up to one. I got it correct. And we go to green. And notice how it resets. Yellow, green, green. That works right. And let's go ahead and get this one wrong. So green, green, it's up to three. Then when we go to hit red, it just clears them all out. And the pick number stayed at three. So it's not completely resetting our game. We need a way to actually have the game start again. So let's go ahead, we'll jump back into our code. Actually, let me take a look here. It did not start over for us. So let's go ahead, we'll jump back into our code and figure out why. So we come down, if we fail, we gotta reset. A few things we should do here. Another one is set the player's current score to zero. And after we call clear, we can actually just start the code routine more time. I'm actually gonna put that down here. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I know I'm gonna wanna go ahead and have some sort of game menu set up and I'll, when they hit the play button that's when I want the game to actually start so I'm not going to put it in the reset game part so let's go ahead we'll jump back in let's go ahead fire it up and now it should restart when we get one wrong so red red green red green and it's supposed to be green but we'll do yellow there we go and it started over for us All right, we've got it restarting our game for us. We learned about the for each loop and we have it constantly adding new colors to the list every time we get the current sequence right. Tomorrow, let's go ahead and work on that score. I'll see you then, bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube and go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>